Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you here. So before we get into the video and the materials and everything we need, I wanted to announce that I opened an Etsy store. Ooh. So on my Etsy, you can find it down below in the description. I'm gonna have all the written patterns for the pieces that I have so you can get them on Etsy as well, other than my website. And all the pieces that I've made in the past, you can also purchase the physical products if you'd like, you know. If you think it's really cute, but you're not trying to make it all yourself, you can just buy the actual product on my store. So please, if you're interested, make sure to check it out. It's in the description down below. So, some of the materials you're gonna need for this granny square crop top. Really fun, simple, interchangeable with all the colors and sizing. I loved it, I love how it looks. A hint to the future, I plan to make like a granny square cardigan also to match. But you're gonna need your base color. Oh yeah, this time I used a new brand of yarn. It's the sugar and cream yarn. And so far I'm liking it. It was, it's done a really good job. It's 100% cotton. So you're gonna need your base color. Mine was this off-white color and these different colors that you'd like to include. So I got mine on this very wonderful pack off of Amazon, which was like a bundle of six different rainbow colors, which I used to make all these variety of colors. So I'll leave that link down below, everything I have. Any questions you have is most likely linked in the description, but you're gonna need your colors, right? Whatever colors you choose to use. A pair of scissors to cut. You're gonna be cutting a lot for each granny square. A darning needle, darting needle. I also have this link down below. This was so useful. I just started really, really using these a few months ago and I really love it to make this. And your crochet hook. So the hook I use is a 4.5 millimeter size hook. The yarn that I'm using It's a size four or medium weight yarn. You can do this with whatever you have. You just have to build it up to the sizing you want. So like the sizing of each square and the whole top in total will be in the written pattern in the description. If you end up making this top, please let me know. Link me, link me, tag me on a photo on Instagram or on TikTok or whatever you have. Email me a photo, anything at Lala Perez. Thank you, thank you for watching. I, if you have any questions while you're making this, just leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you or DM me on Instagram as well. But let me know some of your thoughts. All right, and now we will get into the tutorial. Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we have a good fun one, a really quick summer look before summer goes away because it's already starting to feel a little cold makes me a little sad but at the same time i really love wearing sweaters and i'm gonna be making a lot of sweaters so look forward to that so fall is coming but this is a summer top or you could wear it in the fall maybe but we're making a granny square crop top i'm just gonna show you a few that i've made so far just so you get a little visual right what it's gonna look like so this is really size adjustable I think I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make mine like really, really cropped because I, I like to crop things like this. And then a backside and then some itty bitty straps with these little bits. So I'm gonna quickly show you how to like make a full granny square step by step. After that, I'll leave you to do any color combinations you'd like. So I'll leave this one here as an example and I'm gonna do the same color so this is the yarn I'm using it's the sugar and cream 100% cotton and it's a size 4 or medium weight yarn so first starting off with this inner color we're gonna start with a magic circle I know this can be a little difficult especially in the beginning but I've done it so many times now I think I have the hang of it and I'd say everything just takes practice. So follow along as I go if you need to. So 
I'm gonna pinch it with my thumb, this is my left hand. I'm gonna exit forward towards my nails. My nails look a little scary right now, please excuse that. Pull it back and X towards the back like so and hold it down with your pinky. You're gonna take your crochet hook. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter size hook. I'm gonna place it in between my ring finger and my middle finger. I'm gonna go under that first string. I'm gonna hook onto the one in the back and pull it forward. Twist it like so. And then we're gonna continue with that back string. We're gonna go under and chain one. Then you can let go and it will look like this, right? Just gonna quickly chain two because you want a total of chain two for this. And this string will make the circle smaller. You can make it larger again, okay? So this whole granny square is in works of half double crochet. I'm gonna yarn over, go into the circle, grab your yarn, bring it back, making sure it's loose. We yarn over again and pull this one through all three. Like so. So that is our first one. This chain two will technically be the first round for these petals. We're gonna have three half double crochet per petal, but since we're starting off, that chain two will count as one. So we're gonna do one more half double crochet. So yarn over, go into the circle, bring it back, yarn over again, and pull through all three, okay? So at this point, you have your chain two and two half double crochets. Now we're gonna chain two, one, two. And we're gonna begin doing half double crochets again. We're gonna do three. So yarn over, go into the circle, bring it back like so. Yarn over and pull through all three like so, right? Make sure you're working doing your half double crochets, not too tight, because you don't want it to be too small, you want it to get that puff effect. So again, yarn over into the circle, bring it back, and pull through. That's two half double crochet, and we're gonna do one more. Yarn over, go in, bring it back, yarn over again, and pull through three. Now we have three half double crochets right here, so we finished a petal. So I'm gonna chain two, one, Two. I think they call it a petal or a shell. I always keep going like back and forth. So if I say petal or shell, I mean like one of these, okay? So we're gonna do another three half double crochet. So yarn over into so the circle, bring it back. Yarn over again and pull through all three. That is one. Yarn over and do number two and three. Okay, again, we're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna do our last round of half double crochets, three half double crochets or a shell. So yarn over, go in, bring it back, yarn over and pull through three, That's one. This is two. And three. Okay, we're gonna chain two, one, two. This is what we'll have, right? One, two, three, four shells. We're gonna pull this circle, this string, and close off our circle. I like to close mine off pretty tightly, like that. And now we're gonna connect it to close it off. So I'm gonna come up to this first chain that I see, not, not chain, this like V, right? We have our chain two, one, two, the second one of the chain two we did. And push through like that, grabbing onto both sides of that the V line, right? Grab our working yarn, pull through there, and slip stitch through here, like so, okay? Now it will officially be closed off. We're just gonna chain one, Pull it loose like that, grab our scissors and snip this off. Take that off as well. 
gonna tighten it and it will look like this. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the second color. I think there's like a giant fly in my apartment. I can like hear it struggling against my plants. Oh my God. Okay, my window's open. Let's get that nice breeze. Okay, so for the second one, we're gonna start off with a slip knot. So however you make your slip knots, exit over, pinch center, and pull through like so. Right. Gonna attach ourselves. So now we're gonna attach ourselves to this first initial granny square, the tiny one. I would say just don't attach yourself where we ended off and where we started. We wanna make sure we cover that as much as possible. So I'm gonna go to any one of these three other openings, these corners. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna push through, grab my working yarn, grab it on the other side like that and do a slip stitch. Okay, then we're gonna chain two. So one, two, and we're gonna complete two half double crochet. So yarn over into this opening, grab it back, yarn over again and pull through all three. It's one and two, okay? So that's the first shell like right here. You're gonna chain two since this is a corner. Every corner you will chain two, one, two to give that square effect. And now we're gonna place three more half double crochets into this corner. So yarn over, go in, bring it back. That's one. Two. and three, okay? Two shells completed. Now we're just gonna chain one. Whenever you're at like a flat area of the square, you're just gonna chain one. At a corner area, you will chain two. So I just chained one and now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So yarning over, placing a half double crochet. That's one, two, and three, okay? I'm gonna chain two, one, two, and now we're gonna place three more half double crochets here. So that's one. I like to kind of hide this like starting or ending bulge while I work, so pushing it onto the side like that. It's two. And the last one, number three. All right, so we have so far, we're gonna chain one. We're gonna do the same thing over here. So three half double crochet. One, two, and three. All right, we're gonna chain two since we're at a corner. One, two, and place three more. One, Two, grabbing some extra yarn, and three. All right, again, chain one, place three more half double crochet here, then chain two, and do three more. Chaining two, one, Two. Oops, on my yarn. Okay. And three. One. Two. And three. Like so. We're gonna chain one and we're gonna connect ourselves once again to that second of the chain two we did. Right here. Grabbing our yarn, pulling through. Actually, this is the top stitch, the first. 
after the chain two, that next stitch right there, that's where I'm pushing through. I'm gonna do a slip stitch, okay? So she'll look like, I'm gonna chain one, pull loose like that, and snip off, fasten off, and tighten this. All right? Now, I'm gonna work with my border color. You have like lots of options, honestly. You can make this, you can keep them really small and make your granny square top like a bunch of really small ones. Or you can make them big, or you can make it even bigger than this, right? You can make it like way bigger, way smaller. Have fun with it, you know, do what you can. And all these colorful yarns I got, it was in like a really nice pack on Amazon. That was like a bundle of rainbow yarn. And I know this yarn brand, where's the packaging? Sugar and cream, a lot of people really like it so far. I think it's pretty good as well. It's 100% cotton and I usually don't work with cotton because it's more on the pricey side. But I'd say this is a pretty good bundle. So I'll leave it linked in the description if you guys want to snatch yourself some. A little preview of my next project. I'm probably going to order more of this like rainbow pack of yarn and I'm going to make a granny square um, cardigan. That sounds real cute to me. So to match with the top, right? All right, so next, next color, I'm adding my border color. So again, just starting off with a slip knot. Like so. And we're gonna attach ourselves to any corner. So not here, right? Cause that's where we ended off. So I'm gonna choose right here. I'm gonna bring the yarn through and slip stitch to attach. Then I'm going to chain two, so one, two, and I'm going to do two half double crochets, so one, two, so that will be the first shell. That chain two counts as a shell, I mean it counts as a half double crochet, right? So chaining two, one, two. And I'm going to do three half double crochets right here. So one, two, and three. Okay. So right here, we're going to take a little pause. And because we're coming to a flat area of the square, Right here, we're just gonna place one shell instead of two like we do in a corner, we're just gonna do one. So after you finished your last half double crochet, all you're gonna do is just chain one. And then right here, we're gonna place three half double crochets. So one, two, and I'm hiding that little nub piece. I'm working on top of it. That's three. Okay, just three. Then we're gonna chain one and we're gonna work on this corner. I'm gonna place three half double crochets. Oops, I just like slipped I unattached. Okay, one, two, and the third one. Then we're gonna chain two, one, two, and we're gonna place three more half double crochets in this corner. All right, <clears throat> and then again, since I'm at this flat area, I'm just gonna chain one and place three half double crochets right here. So one, two, and three. All right. And again, I'm just gonna chain one and then come to this corner area and do the two shells. So I'll do that real quick. You already know what to do, you know, three half double crochets, chain two, and then three more.
three, okay? Chaining one, and moving on to this flat side, placing three half double crochet. three and again just chaining one and working on this corner three half double crochet chaining two and then three more i am excited so my brother my younger brother this was so cute he invited me to go eat ramen with him today like as a little like brother and sister date he <laughs> so those are my plans for today today's been pretty chill it's like sunday just crocheting away and then I'm gonna go get ramen with my bro very cute very cute <laughs> all right that's two and three it's really nice outside too like this like mid summer transitioning into fall it's like it's not so so hot but it's also not cold enough yet it's like refreshing to be outside Chaining one and doing three half double crochet. One, three more yarn. Two and three. Okay, we're gonna chain one and connect ourselves. So I'm gonna skip that chain two we did. So one, two, and go to that third one at the top. You can see that's one, that's two, and I'm going through this one, this V, like so. I'm gonna grab our working yarn, bring it back, and slip stitch, like so. And I just chain one, pull it loose like that, grab our scissors, and disconnect, and tighten this off. All right? This is what she'll look like. So at this point, you have a lot of these loose ends. I'm going to show you how to tidy them up, how to weave it in. All right, so I'll show you one way with like a crochet hook and then another way with these darning, darning needles, darning needles. I don't know why it's so hard for me to remember how to pronounce that. I can like hear someone yelling. Can you hear that? I don't know. So, what we're gonna wanna do is bring the two matching colors as close as possible so that we can do a double knot and attach them and just like, you know, cut it off. So, I'm gonna bring this blue yarn. I'm gonna grab it and pull it through these, like so. And then I'm gonna weave it down here. And I'll weave it through here. Like that. Now they're like sufficiently close, I feel. Right here. And I'm gonna place a double knot. It's one and two. Not not way too tight that you like disforms your work. Just like sturdy you can even do like three i'm just gonna do two and then you can just snip it off close to the base like that and then if you have a darning darting needle <laughs> i'm gonna grab one i also got this from a really good pack off of amazon i got like all the crochet hook sizes I need, stitch markers, and a bunch of these for like seven to eight dollars, which is insane. I don't know. I used to go to Joann's and like get a crochet hook, and then it was like three to four dollars for one. And in this pack, I got all the needle sizes or the hook sizes, I mean, plus all these darning needles and stitch markers. I will link it because I think it is a deal. So I'm gonna weave this through like so, as if you're like putting um, thread through a 
through a needle, right? This actually could have been a little longer, but I'm gonna make it work. I'm gonna push through here. Ah, I disconnected, okay. Like that, and pull it through. And then I'm gonna weave it close to this other string, right? Oof. I'm gonna have to just like weave it first, like that, and push this through my needle. Yours is longer, it will work way better. And then pull it through like that. Okay, and then place a double knot. Okay, snipping off these extra bits. We don't need them anymore. Okay, this is what's gonna look like in the front. I'm gonna quickly just weave this one, the border. Make sure you get all of them. I usually make like a bunch of granny squares and then I just spend a while just weaving ends in. Wow, I really didn't make these strings long enough. Hmm. Sorry for the commotion you can hear. I live in the city, so it's inevitable. I can't get away from it. And it's like, I just like moved to the city and I don't know if I'm like a city person. Like, it's like so overwhelming sometimes, you know? Like just being around a bunch of people and people like, I feel like in the city, in the city they're usually more of like a rough mood. People are on edge, but I don't know, I see myself after this moving somewhere like into nature, somewhere really nice and peaceful where I will not be bothered. <laughs> okay, so let me know any of your thoughts if you guys live in the city or the suburbs or the rural area. Rural is such a difficult, confusing word for me. Is it rural? 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 I <laughs> I don't know, but like, whoa, 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 what is that? I'm sorry, okay, just gonna cut this off. Like so, okay? I'll be back once that sound is gone. So after you have all your bigger pieces, right? I'm gonna make smaller versions for my strap do as whatever fits you so it's pretty much how we did the first centerpiece but instead of using a secondary color for the second round or the second row I used the border color instead and then I ended there right I just snipped it off weaved in my ends easy right if you want to see how to make it again I honestly just say go to the beginning again and just do the first two rows make sure making sure the second one is your border color or honestly, there doesn't even need to be a border color. Your top could just be like a bunch of rainbow. Okay, so I'm back and I've completed all the granny squares that I need for the base of the shirt and for the straps. So for my piece, mine is a little more cropped. I would say, you know, I like my crop pieces, but you can always make yours with more squares. So for me, I'm gonna have, this is just like a rough, layout of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have two rows of four, like so, like that. And then I have 16 of these, right? So this is half. There's gonna be a mirroring of the other eight on the other side for the back. And then I have 12 little squares, which will be used for the straps, right? So six on each side, like so. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these. I'm gonna add a border at the top and a slightly colorful, more colorful border at the bottom. And then just in case, I'm not sure. I feel like this is gonna fit me, but maybe like a little very tight. So I'm gonna add a border onto the side. I also think it's just gonna give it like a nice cutesy, more detailed look, but you can always just connect yours simply like that and it will be good. 
So I'd say if you want it longer, just make another row for down here, right? Three rows. So, so we're gonna grab our squares and we're gonna put them all with the bad sides up where you can see the nubs where we tied it off like that. Bad sides up, right? Just gonna arrange it in whichever way you please. First off, I'm gonna show you maybe the more difficult way, which I feel like doesn't make it look as seamless, but still pretty good. I'll show you. You'll be using a slip stitch with your crochet hook, which will make it end up looking like this. And the second way is with a darning needle, which will make, give it more of a flat look, okay? So this way it's a little more bulgy, but it still gets the job done. And the slip stitch makes it more flat and seamless looking. So we're gonna grab it, both bad sides facing up. We're gonna pinch it like this and bring it up. Bad sides on the outside, the both good sides are on the insides, sandwiching or facing each other. So we're gonna go in through one of these corner areas with our crochet hook, like so grabbing both sides of the V-stitch, front and the back post, as I'm pretty sure it is called, like that, both Vs. We're gonna grab our working yarn. Oh, it's a little tangled, okay. Grab our working yarn. We're gonna attach ourselves just like that, just hold on to it and we are gonna pull through, like so. I'm gonna loosen mine a bit and we're gonna place a double knot. So one and two, and now we're gonna slip stitch. So you're pretty much gonna push your hook right through that same two openings we just did. I'm gonna grab our working arm, pull it back, and we're gonna begin. Going into this next opening, you're gonna see these Vs at the top, pushing through the first panel like so, and the back panel, okay? Both Vs are through, grabbing our working yarn on the other side, pulling it through. We have two loops. We're gonna pull this one through the first one, like so. Going into the next opening, like that and like that. Grabbing it, pulling it through, and pulling through like that. This is where I closed off my um, granny square. So I'm just gonna like skip over it cause it's gonna be like, you can't really push through it. So I'm gonna go through the next opening and continue doing slip stitch all the way until I reach the end. And at the end, all I'm simply gonna do is just chain one, cut it off and fasten off, pull it through, you know? Yes. Do the last slip stitch. Again, chain one, pull through, cut it, and fasten off. Okay? So when you do a slip stitch, putting it right sides like that, it will be a little bulgy, but that is okay. It still really works. So now I'm gonna show you how I do it with the darning needle and I'm gonna go one stitch through like that. I could also stitch them up like this first, stitch, 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 and then stitch it all the way through. I'm just gonna go like these, okay? So again, grabbing our working yarn, I'm just gonna weave it through the needle like so, pulling it loose. You don't really have to tie a knot, but you can if you'd want to. So I'm gonna show you up a little closer. When you hold your work on the side, you're gonna see these Vs running along it, like so. We want both Vs to face each other. And right here, we're gonna be working through this stitch. We're not gonna be working through both of them like that, just through this top one. And on this side, we're gonna be working through the bottom one. So the top one is the one 
furthest from us in a sense, right? This one's closest to us, that one's furthest from us. And then this one will be the one closest to us, so this way. And we're gonna weave it through like so, going back and forth in a B, so. Oops, pulling it in a little more so you can see. I am gonna work through like this, pulling my yarn through, pulling enough just to work along all of them. And then this side again, just showing you, it's the one that is closest to me of the V-stitch. And then this side is the one that is furthest away from me. So like so, Oop, like that. Again, from the top, we're gonna go into the next stitch, which would be this one, the V that is furthest away, the stitch furthest away on that side. And over here, it will be the one closest to me. So like that. When you lay your work flat, it should sit flat like that, unlike this other one, which is a little bulgy. So again, if you lay it flat, you can pretty much see the stitch that pops out the most to you like that. And then this way, like so. So once again, just showing you for one more time, holding it up, the V lines, the bottom one will be the one that's closest to you, going through the middle, Sorry for the noise. And the top one will be the one that's furthest from you, going through the middle and out the top like that, okay? We're gonna V, V stitch it, zigzag, all the way to where at the end. Then we're just gonna like tie it off as you would if you were hand sewing, you know, working through the loop. I'll show you at the end. And yeah. Okay, so after doing my last slip stitch, I ended up going up. So all I'm gonna do is go through the bottom and go up again. Pull it until you have the circle and then you're gonna weave it right through the circle. Just like you would if you were sewing, right? And it makes a little knot. Then you can cut this off and do the same for the beginning side. Now how to do the strap pieces, okay? So again, we're gonna grab our little beady pieces. I'll pull you out. We're gonna grab our little, little pieces and we're gonna also wanna make sure that they're the bad sides are forward or up towards up and when we're sandwiching them, good sides are together. We're gonna slip stitch simply like this, you know? Right here, right here, right here. And each strap you want six of these because we have a total of 12. So you want six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We pretty much um, slip stitch our way and do the same on the other side and we'll connect it to the shirt at the end. All right, so after you've completed a full rectangle, this is what you will have, right? All of them are connected. And now I'm gonna show you how to quickly just add a border. This is a border of half double crochets. So I'm just gonna go to any corner. I'm just gonna choose one. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna push my hook through both sides of the V as per usual. Grab our yarn and pull it through. Oof, my chair. Okay, grab my yarn, pull it through and place a double knot. Then again, we're gonna poke our hook through that same opening we just went through. Grab our yarn and chain one. Then we're gonna go into the second opening or the next one, we're gonna yarn over, go in like so, making sure we have both lines of the V, these Vs that run along the bottom. Pull it back, yarn over, and pull through all three to do our half double crochet. So. We're pretty much gonna go through 
each and every one of them at these spaces, right? You're gonna push through, you're gonna have one string at the bottom and the V at the top. Pull, pull a loop and then do our half double crochet. So we're gonna go all the way, one into every opening. And when we're all the way around and we're back here, what we're gonna do is push through that first half double crochet we did, slip stitch the connection, slip stitch a connection, chain one, and cut loose, and we will be done with the first border. All right, so I will leave you to it. Oh, also, while you're working, weave these in or crochet them in between as you go. I think that's always helpful because then later you don't have to like um, hand weave it in one by one. Yes. Okay, so, so far I have both panels and I've connected one of the straps while I was off camera. So I'm gonna quickly explain to you how to connect the other strap, right? So you wanna make sure that you're doing it the right way, like the bad sides are on the inside so you don't see it, but I have to weave that piece in. I will do that in a GIF. But this is the good side up right now, and this is the good side up. I'm just gonna hold it in place what I want. I don't want it to be exactly in the middle like that. I want it to be like a little off center like that. So I'm just gonna hold it like this, flip it, the way that I want it, so it's on the back side, and I'm gonna do the little weaving with my darning needle, and I'm gonna do the same on the back side. And then we can either close up the sides, like completely close it up, but I think I'm gonna do like a tie off detail. So I'll be back to show you how to do that real quick. All right, so now this is what you will have, both sides connected. Right, and the flap right here is still open. So you can always just close it up, you know, do a little slip stitch along the side while it's inside out, flip it back and it'll be good. But I'm gonna add this little two tie detail because I wanna like tie it with two ties on the side. I think it'll be cute. So let me readjust the camera. I am first gonna just like poke through a corner up here with my crochet hook attach myself by pulling it through and adding a double knot. I'm gonna try to like push it more so it's more on like the inside. Maybe it'll be less visible. I'm not sure. So like a little double knot, not too, too tight because I don't wanna like mess it up. Okay, I'm gonna push through that same opening Grab the yarn, bring it back, chain one. I'm gonna go into the next opening doing a single crochet. So I'm gonna push through, grab my yarn, bring it back, yarn over and pull through two. Pushing through the next one, grabbing yarn, bring it back, pulling through two. I can fix the angle. I'm gonna stop once I reach like the center point of this first granny square. And I'll show you how I will make a, like a strap, okay? Okay, so I say like one more. And then I'm gonna begin chaining. So chaining one, two, three, four, like that. Okay, we're gonna chain until it's long enough that we can tie both sides with it. I'll let you know in the full pattern how many chains and like exactly how long it is. So now that it's set up length that I enjoy, I'm gonna skip that last chain and go into the second to last one. 
we're gonna be in slip stitching our way back down. So pushing through, grabbing it, and pulling this one through the first one. The first one is always the most difficult, but after we do it, it will get easier. There we go. Going to the next one and slip stitching. Slip stitching all the way until we get back to the base. Right, and it'll look like that. It'll just be like a little thicker, okay? Okay, so I'm almost back at base right now. I have like two, one more right here. And then I will also make a slip stitch through that initial last single crochet that we did just to connect it all off. And then I'm gonna go into the next opening and begin doing single crochets once again. Here, I'll do a few more so you can see it a little better. <laughs> like so, okay? So I'm gonna continue doing a single crochet until I meet the center point. I'm gonna make another strap and I'm gonna do the same thing for this paneling on the side and onto the other side as well. And then your top is done. So congratulations. I hope you enjoy, I hope you like it. If you liked, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. If you end up making it, please tag me on Instagram and your finished product at Lella Perez. I love seeing them. Thank you so much for watching, for getting through the whole thing with me. And I will see you in the next video. If you have any like suggestions that you guys would like to see, cause like fall is coming up now and winter and those projects are gonna take so much longer cause they're like way bigger. So I need to start planning way more ahead of time. But if you have any ideas that you would like to see, let me know and I will try to make them happen. Thank you for watching. See you next one. Peace.